to have you here, mate. Good to see you again. Good to see you smashing more water, which uh, can you tell us a bit about that? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm in the midst or just the very beginning of a, a clean eating and uh, no excuses, fuck excuses campaign. I'm yep. calling it from big to rig, actually. So I'm going to go from a big unit to a rig of a unit. And I'm, <laughs> uh, I'm training 7.30 every morning and 7.30 every night with my trainer. Wow. Uh, six days a week. Yeah, and uh, eating extremely clean, no alcohol, no sugar, meal plan. And I tell you yeah. what, mate, it started on Monday. What's today? Thursday. So I'm about eight sessions in. Yeah, I know today's Friday, so I'm eight, Friday, eight, yeah. eight sessions in, maybe, and um, seven or eight, and I, I feel fantastic. I actually, it's, feel alive again. How was the first twenty four hours? Though? That's the critical part. Yeah. You know, what's interesting is I thought I would really, really struggle, especially coming straight off the couch and, you know, being about 115 kilos. Mm. I thought I was going to struggle, but I prepared myself for a few weeks before I went, this is it. This is the one I'm making a serious change in life. So mentally and ready. Men and this is the key, right? You can't out train a bad diet yeah. and you know, you can, you can't. Yeah. I guess this one, I was so mentally prepared. The mindset is so strong that I haven't wanted to eat shit food. I haven't not wanted to get out of bed, even though my body, my body's fucked. I'm in agony. You know, everything hurts. Well, I didn't realize I had muscles in my cheeks. So I thought it was just fat. <laughs> but, um, mate, everything hurts, but I feel fantastic, which is good. So that's a good pain to be going through. Good pain. Good pain. So, mate, tell us a bit about how you grew your business. Because I did see on LinkedIn the other day, you guys have achieved some, uh, some massive milestones. Yeah. Yeah. We, um, we started sort of late 2012. And then licensing and compliance and stuff, 2013. So it's seven, seven odd years now. And uh, we're nearly eight. And it, um, we started with a key objective and goal. And my wife, Rebecca, has got a, a personal training background, not that you could tell from my rig these days. But it, we started with the view of that the banks were doing it wrong. And, you know, it's always been done that way is one of the most dangerous statements in the world. We both really, really, truly believe that it, and you've got to innovate. And we got the award this year as the most innovative finance company in Australia. Yeah. And I was doing things the way I'd done them for sort of 13, maybe 13 odd years in finance before we met. And she challenged me on everything. And I'm thinking, well, yeah, why has it always been done that way? And um, the more I ripped it apart, the more I realized I had to eat humble pie and I was bloody wrong. Yeah. Um, so that tasted pretty salty. So we sort of did some R and D and we locked out, we went off social media. So I guess, how did you grow your business? Point one is we went, went off social media for about six to eight months. We shut ourselves off from the world. Yeah. We actually relocated away from friends and family and everything and got ourselves a nice apartment and we locked ourselves away. And back then as well, I went from 138 down to 88 kilos wow. and it was get up, exercise your body, exercise your mind. Yeah and build the business. Yeah. And then of an evening, exercise your mind, exercise your body. There was no socials. There was no glue to your phone. We only checked email twice a day in the morning and the afternoon. Um, we yeah. were so structured with our ideal day plan, a week plan, a month planner that I guess here we are today. One of the, one of the most successful financial companies in Australia, but I think going off socials was key yeah. and identifying a problem in an industry that hadn't yet been solved properly. Yeah. There's a lot of shit out there. Yeah. So I think, you know, and, and detaching from the, Oh, let's celebrate the weekend to say, Gary V says you're doing it wrong. It wasn't yeah. like, Hey, it's Friday. Let's go get smashed. Yeah. It was like, Oh, cool. Well, I don't know what day it is because I'm so engrossed in the research and design of how to solve these problems. Yeah. It doesn't matter what day it is to me. It's just part of the process. So it's keeping that focus because I suppose the staying off socials is a massive one because it's, oh, yeah. a, it's such a bloody distraction. And, and even to, you know, not just being a distraction, it, it's, you know, a lot of people will get hung up on what they see on socials or what they consider or perceive people to be doing or money that, are, you know, these people are making all these lifestyles that, 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 you know, people are living, which most of the time is, is bullshit. That's right. It's, yeah. it, it doesn't have, you know, it, it doesn't show any of the hard work that they're doing for it. And, and all it's doing is zapping your time every time you're spending on it. You're just wasting an hour, hour and a half scrolling through. Seeing all this that, bullshit. Mate, no, nobody puts their failures on Instagram or face space, do they? It's no. only the, it's only the <laughs> fucking success stories, right? And that's, they, yeah, that, 
they don't talk about the bad days and the ventures that went wrong and legal issues and staff issues and family. They don't talk about any of that shit. I no. just want, I'd love to see them just put up a post of just screaming children. Or a because it's relatable, person. yeah? It's yeah like, a that's a fucking person. real situation. Yeah, I want to see a business person like in the fetal position in their office rocking backwards and forwards <laughs> going, fuck, what have I done? Like, because, <laughs> and that's the thing. We've all been there and we've all been through those parts where... You know, and, and I remember that there was parts where I'd be driving to work years and years and years ago and just replaying over and over that Arnold Schwarzenegger, you know, those, those rules that he has on life and playing it over and over and over and trying to convince myself that everything's going to be all right. But the other part of my mind was just thinking, fuck and hell, what is wrong? You just, yeah. you know, and it's hard to get past that point. <laughs> That's so true. Like you keep telling yourself everything will be all right. And then another thing here, it's a left hook and an uppercut. And it's the next thing. Fuck and hell. It's like, I, I think... To summarize it, you know, successful business people, you could almost take the year 2020 that's been around no. the world and say, that's been the it. business journey. 2020 is like building your own business and being an entrepreneur. But people only demonstrate the wins. It's like a gambler. Yeah. You don't hear about all the money they've bet and gambled and lost. You only hear about the wins. And I love what you guys are doing. You know, I think it's so important that we all start being congruent and sharing about the losses and the struggles and mm. people need to know that we've all gone through the same thing or similar things yep. and that it's going to be okay. And when I love this saying, say everything will be okay in the end. Mm. If it's not okay, it's not the end. That's yeah. I like that. And I really, really like that. That's good. I've actually got that too. And it's, it's just an anonymous quote that I can't remember where I picked it up, but it's in a frame behind my desk in Piermont and my Bella Vista, my two Sydney offices. Mm. Might actually have to, that reminds me, I might put it up in here in Queensland. But I just, like I've had days when my head was in my hands and just absolute disaster. You know, things are exploding and imploding. And I look up at that and I think, fuck, shit's not mm. okay. So it can't be anywhere near the end. That's right. It's yes. okay in the end. And that's, that's a really, really good point because if shit's not okay and you're not at the end, keep pushing through it. Because at some point it comes good and, and you'll be surprised when you get to that point. You're like, fuck, that was hard work, but the worst. And yeah, it's like, I try to explain to people too. I've been through some crazy shit. You know, I had an online stalker for over a year and a half and they disappear and they start and you know, all this stuff and, and, and all this fake posts and slander. And it's like, it's weird. It's like, Usually just before this absolute abundance of happiness and fulfillment and success or whatever it is that, you know, just fills you up, mm. you always seem, oh, I've experienced, you always seem to have the lowest low, the worst, worst, the most, yeah. oh my God, like your world is crumbling. Life is over as you know it. Yet just around the corner, you have this abundance of happiness, success and fulfillment. And that's what I keep saying to people. If it's not okay, it's nowhere near the end. Cause you wouldn't even be in the journey. Yep. So just, just hang on, like push through, like, and it kind of I, sums I actually, up, uh, like what you're saying before, it really sums up 2020, doesn't it? Like it it's does. not okay. It's not okay yet, but keep pushing and it will get okay. It will get yeah. amazing. You get magnificent. And 2020 has this year has been, you know, it's the most bizarre year for, I'm sure all of us who have never lived through anything like this, but it's given, you know, what we found has given us a lot of really good time to bunker down, reassess, re-strategize and then look at what are we doing right now and how the hell can we do that better to make it yeah, proof i think it's i think people are realigning with what's really truly important to them they're getting more time with family mm. they're realizing that yeah work pays the bills but you know i think people are, are taking stock of life and what's important because you know I, I only had a meeting with somebody today over lunch whose mother's just passed away Mm. and you know and, and it's, it's really really sad and you're talking to him and he's in a really good space fortunately he's taken time and he's he's processed but you don't know one day you can wake up and it could be terrible but life goes on and human beings are extremely versatile yeah. and the old saying you have nothing to fear except fear itself i think it's a warren buffett line like you get we get we get consumed it's this self-fulfilling prophecy and anxiety and depression it's not that it's not real We've all experienced it. If you say you haven't, then I think you're full of shit. It's about how we deal with it and handle it and, and knowing that it's okay to talk about it, in, especially in business. We're not yeah. bulletproof. No, and it's not, I don't think that it is talked about a lot in business. And, you know, mm. I, I think that even um, life in general, there's, 
there's, you know, there's not a lot of people that, that talk about it and there's a hell of a lot of people that go through it. And when you mention to someone, I've mentioned to people before, look, I've gone through some, some, you know, really serious anxiety in my life. And they're like, what, what do you mean? Like, you know, you're, you're successful and you're doing all these businesses and this and that. I said, but you'd be surprised how many people have gone through this because everyone goes through shit in their lives. It's yep. just how you deal with it. And, and, you know, that leads me to a great question is, is, you know, you've obviously been through some anxiety or depression, you know, where were you when you're at those, those places and, and how did you come through it? Yeah. I mean, I mean, like I was talking about before, I testified in an ASIC case and, you know, people were struck off for, for life and years and all sorts of stuff. And, and um, then I, instantaneously in that appeal, I had three, 400 fake posts about me appear on the internet over mm. 10 months, but yet there was nothing on the internet bad about me for 18 years. Yeah. So it's like a hello, yeah. but you know, when, when you get another client or family or for another person call you and go, have you seen this? Mm. You know, the, the, all this, the hot spits in the throat and the pity of stomach, the stomach. And the stomach's churning and you're like, Oh my gosh. And this is my good name. And you know, like, and you just, you just want to fucking strangle somebody. But, I guess I went through that for 10 months and still going through it now with, with these people. And the silly thing is we know who it is and we can press a button and they go to jail. We're, we're in the Supreme court with a suppression order, but it's like, I actually have learned to embrace it through some mentors. And I really invested heavily in Tony Robbins over the last couple of years and, and a lot of personal development growth. I can say that I was a really shit human being a few years ago, but I think looking in the mirror or sharing that now and saying, I wasn't a good employer. I wasn't a good partner. I wasn't a good friend or, friend, you know, I wasn't the best version of me, like starting the health and fitness journey seriously again now. And you go to a pretty deep, dark place, as you probably know, and you don't want to talk about it and you don't want to share it. It's, it's taboo. And we talk about it and we talk about the, are you okay? And all this stuff and talk, you know, but, unfortunately a lot of successful and and people that are not yet successful business people are too embarrassed and scared to talk about it and i mean the, the things that it does to your body you know how you feel i mean tony robbins was was a life changer for me how do you feel when you're depressed and anxious and all of his course have done and and what does that do to your body over a lengthened or even a short period of time and i know for me I, I've, I've been fortunate enough to invest in those personal skills and development and growth to now take it on board and go, well, if someone wants to throw bricks at me, that's fine. I'll catch them and build an empire with free bricks. Yeah. And you know what? I'm going to feel sorry for you in the process yeah. because I can lie straight in bed at night yeah. and I, I sleep well, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So I think it's, it's, you know, it's a pretty dark place mm. and it's, a, I, it's really important for people if they're experiencing it now and they're, they're watching us, you know, on this podcast to, to you know, really seek out the skills and, and the professional help to be able to learn how to process it internally and externally, to yeah. change their state and to, to move forward and go, you know what, it's not happening to me, it's happening for me. Correct. It's and even like you were saying before, it, it was an interesting one. It touched on with, um, you know, identifying what is that emotion that's making you feel like that that's when, right. it, when it does come up and, and yep. just stop and take heed of it and think, okay, what's this emotion? Why is it triggering me? And, and, a massive part of it for, for me was letting go of it all. Um, and, and I spoke with, with a guy the other day about it and just saying that we try to control so much. Yeah. And that is what really does your head in. You can't, you, I, we can't control what somebody else does. Mm. So at the end of the day, you either actually embrace it and start to enjoy it or embrace it or turn it into a game or whatever it is. But because it creates yeah. growth. Yeah. Like if you're yeah, embracing it, it and you're building more muscles, they're the emotional muscles oh. that you need to be able to push past this stuff. It's like going to the gym. I'm like, yeah, throw some more bricks. I'll just <laughs> get a Oof, gun show. Yeah, you exactly. know, like it, it, it's, but again, if you spoke to me two years ago, there's no way I could have this conversation with that confidence. It would be, woe is me pity party. I'm mm. in a deep, dark place, you know, and, and it was pretty, it, made, it, was, it was tough, you know, mm. it really, it affected me for a, a long enough period of time in my life that those people may get some satisfaction, but those people need to deal with that for the rest of their lives. Correct. They're going to have to feel that. And, and, and that's like, so, so for me, it's like, you know what, whatever, whatever anyone, and this is common in business, people throw stones, right? Your competitors, your, 
your friends and family, your co-workers, your employees, other business partners can, can throw stones. But at the end of the day, that's their own insecurities or their own failures. Yeah. If, if they were, you never meet a hater doing better than you, for example, right? It's not that people just wake up and go, oh, I feel stressed and depressed because I'm having a bad day or business isn't good. We can work through that, mm. but it's really hard when other people bring others down. Yeah. And I love that the be awesome model you guys have and spending time in your business with you guys. I just, I love the culture that you guys have built. It's, it's fucking phenomenal. Thanks, it's, mm. it's an amazing, vibrant culture of, you know, everybody to be their best. Yeah. And that's so rare in a workspace these days. I absolutely love it. credit credit to you guys. It's phenomenal. Yeah, thanks, man. Appreciate it. And that, you know, look, that's something that we work really, really hard on. And it's not um, it's constant work that that everybody in the whole team puts in and creating this really vibrant energy, a really communicative space, you know, especially going through a time like now where, you know, this is our first week where no one's in the office. We're all separated mm. and, and, you know, I've called around a few people today and we've got some zoom drinks set up tonight, but keeping that communication and keeping everyone and, and, you know, not giving anyone any limitations. If someone wants to do something or they want to change roles, we're all for it. If you think that you're yeah. better suited over here or you've got dreams and aspirations to go here, yeah, fuck yeah, let's go for it because we want Absolutely. people to be open and thriving, not just coming to work and doing a job, punch in and punch out because, you know, that's not living. It's, a, it's an interesting way you just said that, mate. I talked a lot of, I've talked so much about this issue. So that's not, you said that's not thriving, right? I talk about that so much this year for me. It's like, do people just want to survive 2020 or thrive? <laughs> do people just want to survive in life or thrive? So this, I have this massive like survive or thrive thing going on in my world and sphere, sphere and bubble at the moment. Cause it's an interesting word to use thrive. Like, everybody deserves to thrive at something or some things. And yeah. I really love that you use that word for your teammate because it's so like to want other people to thrive and prosper and grow is selfless. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's the ultimate yeah. act. And it creates, you know, that, that's what we find that when everyone is, is, is in that zone and, and bringing that energy, it's, it's super hard to pull that energy down or to draw that energy down. You can't. Be exactly. You can't because, you can't you can walk around the corner to the next, to the next desk. And then there's someone there just, you know, just on, yeah. we've got one particular guy in there, which I think you met Luke and he's this big gigantic bloke. And every day, like he has his off moments as we all do, they're off mm -hmm. moments, but for the most part, he just comes in and he's got these massive arms and you can't get away from it. He just wraps you up. And even if you are having a shit moment, he's like one of my go-to guys. I bet Luke come on. Lay one on me, mate. Just wrap, <laughs> wrap me up, wrap me up. You know, I call him the bear because it's like just getting wrapped up by a bear. But that energy that that you know guys like that bring, and, and there's uh, you know all the other people in the office, they're always going to smile. They're always you know stop, have a chat. What's going on here? What's going on there? Da, 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 da. And a really good high energy. And it's not necessarily work that we we will talk about. I mean, there's a lot of that that goes on, but it's also too just about you know what's going on in their life what's you know what's really pumping them up and it's so important to have that is as you know forget about just in the workplace but as human beings that's you know that's absolutely. exactly that's what we thrive on absolutely we, we do you know we, we in some cases you spend more time or most cases you spend more time interacting with your coworkers than you do with your family mm. you might only see your family for a couple of hours a night before you go to bed and an hour or two in the morning before you go to work. Mm. You spend more time in the corporate or workplace environment typically than you do with your own family. Yeah. So it's, you know, we, we're in infinity. We call it the infinity financial family. There's no clients and staff and advisors. It's a family. Group. Like yeah. we, we embrace it within the infinity family. And, and it's so important that, that, that we're all on even level playing field and we're all family and we all help each other together. And it's not just about, you know, we're in finance. It's not just about money. It's about, you know, people have passed away or people are getting new jobs or lost jobs or having bait, you know, it's about life. Yeah. It's you know, contributing. It's, and, yeah. and I remember when, um, when you and Lou came down and, uh, and you guys are saying that there's one super important thing that you guys do. I think you and Lou take it in turns. I'm not sure exactly how it works, but you'll make sure that you're doing the coffee walk. The coffee with, walk. With yeah. Which so at the give, moment, give us a bit so, about that. To tell us about that. Yeah, so that, that's Lou, whether you call it life counselling or career counselling. <laughs> that's um, all, that's all, yeah, you get everything in. Uh, in yeah, the it's, it's predominantly Lou, as you've seen. He's probably got one of the best natures out of any human being you've ever met. Yeah. He could tell you that your, your lifelong kitten died and everything was going to be okay. You'd, you'd cry, but you'd think it's going to be okay. Before you yeah. tell the story, give us a bit of a picture of what 
what Lou is, who he is, and what his character is because he's a, oh <laughs> look, he's he's <laughs> I love the guy. Yeah, I call him the Godfather because he's in a he's a I wouldn't say elderly because he'll watch this and fucking punch me, but you know <laughs> he's a, he's a middle aged refined Italian gentleman and he's just a man of the world. He's had so many jobs and so many businesses, and he openly shares. Not all was successful, mm. you know. There there were some, but. He, he and I learn from each other every single day because he's been a very successful businessman. He's had businesses that went under. Mm. Yet he's still here standing in his 60s, working his backside off because he loves it. He mm. absolutely, but he loves people. Yeah. And that's the thing, you know, he, he loves, we call it the coffee walk, but we're, we're on the Jones Bay Wharf in Sydney in our Piermont office, and we're at one end, and the coffee shop, there's one at the other end. There's one two doors up, but we go all the way to the other end. and just to grab a, hey, Dan, how you going? Yeah, want to come for a coffee? And to just walk down the pier chatting about mm. life, about work, anything, right? Random family, to order a coffee and chat while you are, and walk back. But, you know, sometimes by the end of the day, you're on your eighth coffee and it's a bit, you know, a bit crazy. <laughs> and then <laughs> so, to switch to decaf. Then you sit there every night and just think about everyone's world and what's going on for everybody. But it's, I think, and it's really important. That's an interaction. Really, really yeah. important. I mean, we had a team meeting the other day and I ended it with Evan. I said, now, how can I help you? How can I solve a problem in your world right now? And everyone's face went, huh? Yeah. I haven't that for I was like, well, how can I be of service to you? What have you got going on that you're just under the pump and you know I could solve it, but you don't want to ask? Yeah. Let, me, let me help you. Because that's a, it, massive, a, massive, a massive point too, isn't it? Because... I don't know whether people get afraid to ask or they just, they just think that it's going to fall on deaf ears, but people just don't ask. And, and I say to people all the time, if you've got anything on your mind, let me know. I don't care I, I if you think it's are. stupid or what it is, but just let's talk about it. I think they are. Mate. I think well, I know that like, they're either too scared or they know that that's their job, but we mm. all get under the pump, all of mm. us. And it's, you know, it's so important in the workspace. It's like, well, how can I take some of your pain and make it some of mine? Mm. Yeah, I've got a full diary too, but how can I better serve you to better serve me? Or mm. how can I better serve you to better serve the customer? Because that's why we're here. Yeah. And that's that family thing, you know. If you've seen, if you've seen your, your kids or your partner struggling, you know, lugging the washing basket downstairs or outside, you'd go and help them. Yeah, you know, that's that family culture that's so important. And I think if you're in, you know, if you're in an environment or a workplace or whatever it is and you are asking for someone generally for help. And, and you've got a negative response. I think it's time to quit that fucking job and, Absolutely. Or, or leave that relationship or mm -hmm. move on to it, you know, to something that's going to serve you because, you know, everyone in life needs help. I don't give a shit who you are at some point. Everyone needs help. Everyone needs a hand. Everyone needs to talk about something because even, you know, the best of the best of the best have coaches, the best of the best of the best Absolutely. do meditation. They do yoga. They go to the gym. They do yeah. something to pull them out of what they're doing and, and refocus. That's right. And that's, you know, I suppose that goes back to, um, you know, what you were saying with, with your gym work. Is that a really big form of focus for you at the moment? Is that how you keep focused? How, you know, how do you stay on top of that? Yeah. And I, well, at the moment, mate, it's, it's all mindset. You know, if you say you can, you can. Mm. If you say you can't, you can't. Yeah. And I'm actually documenting this and not necessarily to commercialize it and turn it into a business, but... I'm documenting it to share with our community and our family, which is thousands of people up, you know, in Australia mm -hmm. that I can show them and say, Hey, this was me two, three months ago. This yeah. is me now. And if you believe you can't, you can't. Yeah. And if you believe you can, you can, you're right both times. Yeah. But if you get your mind and you have to want it, that's the key. Like my wife can't tell me that well, she can tell me I'm overweight and she'd like me to lose weight, but that doesn't mean shit. Yeah. I have to want it. You know, yeah. I have to get to the point where I went to tie my shoelaces up and couldn't breathe because I'm too fucking fat. You know, <laughs> I, I, I had to experience like, whew, I'm going to take a breath to go back to do the other loop. Yeah. You know, like shit's yeah, getting yeah, real. Yeah. Yes. So, you know, you have to want anything in life and yeah. you have to want it badly enough yeah. to go after it. And, yeah. and, and hit the... One of my business mentors gave me a line that I've, he's allowed me to steal and coin. And it's, if you only focus on your outcomes, all your obstacles will give way. Mm. I don't That's... focus on competition. I don't focus on peripheral drama, people throwing stones. I focus on my mission. Yep. I know what my mission is with laser focus, which is to 
free people from what the major banks in Australia are doing to them and, and give them an education they didn't get in school or uni. And I'm just so focused on it that nothing phases me anymore. It mm. just did when I first started getting stones thrown. And now I'm like, <laughs> whatever. Yeah. yeah. Cause like, there's always going to be look, stuff that happens in between that, isn't there? You know, like the way I view it now, mate, is that that those people or persons, they're actually wasting their personal time mm. to throw a stone at me. Yeah. Well, if you were more successful than me, you wouldn't have the time to throw stones at me. You, I wouldn't even be in your sphere. I wouldn't mm. exist in your brain. Yeah, correct. So, so where's your like, focus? Like, and that's I, the thing. I take it as a bit of respect. I'm like, fuck, you got the time to worry about me. <laughs> hey, you know, it gets me, it actually makes me walk a bit taller and work a bit harder. They pump yeah. me up. So, yeah, absolutely. And yeah. Then Tom, Tom Billiard says this. I don't know if you know Tom Billiard, and Exit yeah. and Quest and Lisa, they're really successful. He's like, I have a list of haters mm. and I've had it for a long, long time. And I regularly look at it because those haters the ones push you. hate me. They push you to get to the next level, don't they? They push you to prove them wrong. So when, when I'm in that gym and I'm mm. struggling at the moment to do my second session tonight and I'm mm. struggling, I've got mm. go-to in my head, yep. go-to haters, go-to people that want to see me fail. Yeah. And that just absolutely unequivocally does not let me fail. Well, that's the thing. I was listening to some stuff the other day and Will Smith was talking about that and talking about failure. And he said, you know, failure is a part of success. He said, without it, you would not succeed. And he said, why do you go to the gym? And, and the answer straight away was, well, you go to the gym to lift weights and why do you go to, to lift weights? Could you go there to, to do it until failure? Yeah. So you lift weights until you fail. So the whole you know, the ethos behind going to the gym is doing it till you fail. And, and once when you, you fail, fail, that's when the growth begins. 100%. So yep. it's, it's full circle. So you've got to understand that you're going to fail, but it's not actually a failure. There's so much lesson inside that, just taking it away from it. And, and I love talking to people too. And I say, people go, oh, what about all the mistakes you've made along the way? I said, oh, I haven't actually made any unless I did it twice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, well, in the last two or three years, I've learned that everything is a lesson. And mm. now I can teach you, not my mistakes, yep. learn from my lessons that have allowed me to learn and grow and mature. Mm. And I don't consider them a mistake now. It's a lesson. It's a life lesson. I mean, our parents always want to look up. They say, oh, don't do that, Graham. Don't. They know, right? Because they've made that mistake. Well, I don't, call, I don't use the word mistake at all anymore. I like it's that. A That's good. Yeah. It's a lesson. Like yep. in our, our company, in our family, mistake is banned. Mm. Hey guys, if something goes wrong and there's a lesson from it, we need to get together and have a lesson huddle. Yes. Stop what you're doing. Let's all get together. What have we learned from what's just occurred? Yeah. What are our takeaways from that? And how do we ensure we improve on that? And it's not a mistake because if we can all grow from it and 16 other people in our financial community hear that program, Ooh, I've had that before. Mm. That's a lesson. That's a really good way to look at it actually. Cause Mark and I've often said, We've made that many mistakes, every fucking mistake under the sun we've made. And we, you, so we changed it and said, well, that's our university degree. We never went to Correct. university. And Mark left school at 15. I left that. I barely passed uh, high school yeah. and, and we didn't do any formal education after that. And so those lessons, not the mistakes now, the lessons mm. is, is that's our uni degree. That's, that's, that's our education. That's your MBA. Yeah, that, 100%. You know, that's, and, and I'm much the same, mate. As a housing commission kid from absolutely nothing, it's, their, their life lessons mm. and you know growing up like oh i made a mistake i'm sorry no that's where the growth occurs that's the failure mm. it's a lesson now yeah. if you go back and do it again you're a fucking idiot <laughs> <laughs> if it's a same if it's a that's same a mistake, mistake. <laughs> yeah yeah but there, therein lies the mistake but if you can learn from it and grow mm. and even share that lesson with somebody it becomes a lesson yeah. It's only for me now, I've learned it's only a mistake if I go and do it again. Mm. To me, that's just the definition of stupidity or insanity, doing the same thing over and over again. That's the definition of insanity for sure. Yeah. So for me, it's like, well, doing it twice is insane and it's a mistake or it's insane. Mm. But doing it once is growth. That's my degree. That's my life journey. That's my path. Yeah. And oh, man, the things I've gone through in the last five, 10 years. Mm. Oh, I would mm. never be the human being I am now to be of service to others without being able to, to experience any of that ever. Mm. Yeah. And that's, that's um, I think that uh, Tony Robbins said it as well, that, you know, when someone's trying to go through something, 
Um, and he says to them, okay, well, what have you tried? And I said, oh, I've done this, this, and this. And they said, how many, how many times have you tried that? I've tried it a hundred times. I said, okay, all right, tell me. Show me how many times. And they say, ah, oh, well, maybe 10 times. And they yeah. say, all right, well, tell me those 10 times. Okay, maybe five times. And over <laughs> the five times, it's the same thing over and over and over. over, and over again. It's no difference. So it's, you know, it's, it's, it's probably goes right back to what you were first saying at the start when you have really looked at all, you know, all your business and you looked at it from such a different angle and doing something completely different to everyone else is doing it. That's, you know, that's where the, 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 the magic is and you know, in life it, and business. It is. And you know, what's crazy about it. Like that was 2012, you know, late last third of 2012 when we sat down and locked ourselves away from the world yep. and into all the, and I remember never forget into the 30th of June 13, when we were like, right, we got this. We figured it out. You know, it was six to nine months of R and D, research and design, mm. and yet here we are in 2020, in the eighth month, and we've just been given the most innovative financial services company in Australia at mm. the Australian Broking Awards. Yeah. So people are, like, oh, I'm going to get rich in two years. Oh, I'm going to build a startup in 12 months. Like it takes nine months to have a baby, guys. If you're mm. successful straight away, could take two years of trying. Mm. Like. And people get really jealous and, and things like that. It's like, well, I've been doing this, my industry, it's all I've ever done for 20 years almost now. Mm. And it took seven to eight years to be the most innovative. Mm. Now, we thought we were the most innovative back then, yeah. but not only did we design and research, that magic you're talking about, that came out of refining and learning mm. and mm. learning and failing and failing and fixing and learning and growing continuously and, innovating and, and and yeah learning and not staying in that deep dark anxious depressed space of oh that didn't work shit throwing the towel oh mm. that's a pro like oh we've hit a roadblock here mm. like, don't ever give up and that's what we say you know if if it's a coin we'll flip it 20 different ways to try and find another angle another surface another edge until we found you know that that real magic point of it because there is if you just look at it on both sides and go well fuck it's a coin you're gonna miss it there is well, something three sides there. to a coin yeah yep there's the edge yep exactly and that's what everyone's looking for is the edge correct you know so it's important to really twist everything around and and look at it from every single angle and sometimes you get so bogged down in doing that you need an external person to come in and say well have you thought about this and then you go Fuck, bang no i never thought about that and that's where the magic comes from it's not I mean, always it's not always us that are doing it like we said we've got a team of amazing people and sometimes they'll just come and go what about that what do you think Fuck. that's why that's why coaching's just blowing up and why culture's so important and you know employee share plans and equity you know gone are the days of where people go and get a job out of school and they get work there till they retire and get a gold watch mm. like people are all part of something bigger now and it's huge you know and, and it's so important for business owners especially and employee to have that mindset of if you treat the business as if it's your own even as an employee eventually the business owner will reward you mm. if you don't feel like that's going to occur then you're in the wrong wrong place yeah you know and I mean? that's that's you know the, the the amazing part about you know especially business in australia i think we're probably one of the luckiest countries in the world that if if you are just getting into the workforce you can spend two years at one company, go to the next company for two years, go to the next company. You can literally, you've got the pick of the crop if you want to really put in your hard work and you can go anywhere and get as much experience as you want. So we're lucky in that sense that you, if, if, if you've got a shit boss or it's a shit workplace, move on. Yep. There's so much opportunity here for people. So, so much, man. You're right. And, and that's it's part of the apprenticeship, yeah, right? Like it is. I keep, I keep wondering when someone's going to build you know, the, oh, I wanted to build it because I'm pretty entrepreneur. It's like the school of business. Mm. Like no one's built the entrepreneurship apprenticeship. Mm. And I get people coming to my sphere and, you know, last year we got the best broker in Australia award. And mm. that was amazing. But again, that was like 18 years in the industry. Mm. And people, oh, oh man, I'm going to, I want to be nominated for that next year. Hopefully, right? I'm like, you've been here for six months. Yeah. You're new to the industry. Yep. And you want to achieve something that took me 18 years <laughs> in eight months. You know, like, <laughs> I, I, I think, and that's, I think there's a big key, mate. We talked about depression, anxiety in business earlier. There's a really big key thing. There is social media is great, but it's also bloody dangerous that people live in a fake bubble mm. and 
they want what people have taken 15, 20, 30 years to build and, and earn rightfully. No. People want that in six minutes or six days. Like, yeah, because so everything what? is so is so instant for, for everything else, for every part of our lives. Yeah. You grab your phone and just bang this, bang that, bang, 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 bang. Well, why can't I have all this shit right now? I yeah, don't have to like, work that if, hard for it, do I? If I, I should was just a come. carpenter, I'd have to do a four-year apprenticeship. Mm. If I was a GP or a doctor, I would have to do six years of university. And so it does concern me. So people don't, don't be so hard on yourself in business. Yes, you're struggling. Yes, mm. your team's struggling sometimes. But remember, it takes you four years to get signed off on a trade. Mm. It takes you six years of study to become a doctor or you know, four years to do an undergrad as a lawyer and a postgrad of a couple of years or an MBA. Like, I think people have to go back and realize that business is an education as well, like you said. And it's an mm. education that involves a lot of lessons, i.e. failure slash mistakes. You think people get too um, caught up in looking at the things that they're not achieving as opposed to, because they know that, you know, Mark and I for, for a long time would just be, you know, smashing out and achieving this bang, yet yeah, bang, next, bang, bang, bang. But we wouldn't actually celebrate those wins. We wouldn't sit back and look at all the achievements. <laughs> and, and people just rip themselves apart, right? Because they're like, well, you know, they look at all the things that they haven't done yet. Well, I haven't got this and I haven't got the million dollars in the bank and I haven't got this car and I haven't got this. So then you torture, you're just surrounded by all these things that you don't have, so you feel like Mate, shit. You just hit a hot button. Rebecca and I were just talking, my wife were talking about this the other week. We we're like, when was the last time we celebrated a win? Yeah. Do you know what I like? Really? You're too, busy, you're too busy just trying to crush it, yeah? Well, no, you know what happens? You, you, you hit the milestone, the money in the bank or the, the investment or the asset or the results from the team or... You know, for us, we're driven by the, the client's results. Yeah. And you hit those milestones that we just cleared over a billion dollars, $1.044 billion in client assets under management in 12 months of this new venture with our business mm. partner. Congratulations. And that's unheard of. Mm. And, and we hit that, but yet we haven't taken stock to celebrate because there's 38,000 other things that we're trying to hit. Yeah. And, and we've just sort of sat down with ourselves and one of our mentors and gone, hang on a minute. We have to celebrate the wins, no matter how small they are. That's a real hot button for us at the moment. You don't want to get complacent, but yeah. it's important that your community, your culture, your, your family, your team, you have to celebrate the wins, no matter how big or small they are. Mm. Oh, really, um, yeah, yeah 100% I agree. And that's the thing that, that Mark and I have really taken stock of and you know, celebrating that with the team as well. Mm. And so how, um, how, like with mentors along the way, and, and Mark and I are massive on this and massive on, on you know, um, always discussing things with, with people that have been in business for longer than us and, mm. you know, guys like you that we can spitball ideas with. How important has that been in your life personally and career-wise? But absolutely instrumental. I mean, I put some dedications in my book to some people that took me through the banking, my banking career. And without those mentors, I never would have learned the things I've learned. Mm. Um, I've had phenomenal, I've had some bad mentors along the way as well, but again, they're, you need them. You need, you need you need, them. Look, I, I, I'm again, I'm really appreciative to some of them because I know not what to, what not to do. Yeah. Um, but I, I, you know, I've got some really strong mentors that I still, still touch base with that I'll be forever grateful for. You know, I'll never forget my first opportunity in banking when I was just in a, a junior role and you know, my manager wanted to counsel me out because she was a drunk. She used to go to the club with a boyfriend every day for two hours and uh, come back pissed and nap at the desk out the back. And she wanted to counsel me out of the business because I had no training. Yeah. Yet, uh, we had a relief manager come out when she was on leave who absolutely invested in me and loved me and just clicked with me. Mm. And when she went on holidays, I got the opportunity to be her relief trainee manager mm. and absolutely crushed it. And if it wasn't for her, her name's Annette. And, if it, and I still talk to Annette now. You know, she's retired and got grandkids and everything. But if it wasn't for people like her that yep. believed in me and invested in me when they didn't need to, mm. and, you know, I wouldn't, and I, it's good. I get to ring her every year or so and we go, hey, you want to go to the club for lunch and have a counter meal and a drink? And yep. it's just great to see her and how proud she is of me. You know, she tears up. Mm. And I get, so I get teary thinking about it, like, nobody needs to do that for people, but without, us doing that for our team and someone doing and without passing the baton yeah it's, it's, um, it's giving back isn't it it's like all that yeah. information that you've learned along the way and all those mentors that you've had and and reinvesting that and and that's you know one thing that we're massive on as well and and 
you know, I'm spending a bit of time with um, a couple of our cadets and, and doing some mentoring with them. Mm. And it's, it's amazing to see, you know, because this for us, that's our future generation. And, and these are the guys that are going to take the business over when, you know, when, when, when we're not there anymore, but giving them that knowledge, because where else are they going to get it from? They're not going to just going to get it sitting behind a, head, a desk and, and working their asses off. You, you well, get the only by- way they're going to get it, mate, is to actually make that lesson happen themselves, that mistake, that failure. Yeah, correct. And yeah. if you can teach them where you've gone off course before and had that, that failure, mm. they can grow at an exponential rate. And this is why we're seeing business ideas and unicorn companies and innovative things that we've never seen and heard of. Like, so, you know, we're so versatile. You look at out of the, the GFC, Uber, mm. you know, like the businesses that came out of the GFC because humans are like, shit, what are we going to do here? Like, shit's pretty bad. What do we do? And we're so versatile and such resilient people, creatures, you know? So like, especially in Australia too, like we've got that real uh, competitive fight mentality. Like, well, now the chips aren't down. It's not okay yet. So let's keep punching through. It's interesting. We, We have that, that great Aussie battler. Like we don't like to give up. But in the same token, I go to the States a bit for business and, and New Zealand and Singapore, around the world. And Australia has a really disgusting tall, tall poppy syndrome. Like, yeah. makes me sick. Mm. Oh, see the car he got? See the bit? Oh, drug dealer. Or, you know, oh, I don't, you know, didn't do that legit. Like, we have this disgusting tall poppy syndrome that if you're successful, you're dodgy. Yeah, get cut and, in the or, or it's too good to be true. Well, it's not. Just get off your fucking ass and have a crack. Mm. And not only have a crack, like you were telling me the 10 times, a hundred times I tried to lose weight. Mm. Well, it's actually three and you did the same thing three times. Well, failed yep. the first time. That's the definition of insanity. Mm. So it's a, like, if you want it, you'll get it. Yeah, It's as simple as my grandfather's passed away now. And he used to say to me, if you work hard enough and study hard enough and do something for long enough, yep. you'll be in a fortunate, blessed position to be able to pay people to do the things that you're not competent at or one day that you don't even like doing and, and you'll a, be able to teach other people. That's a really good point too with the tall poppy syndrome is that, you know, nothing feels better than supporting someone who you know is working their ass off. Even if, if they're, you know, at, at bottom level or if they're going through stuff in life, but if you, support them through that you know that's that's human nature right we're all we're all here to you know spread and share as much love as as we can with with each other whatever way that is and by supporting each other and uplifting each other you're uplifting yourself you're giving yourself all this amazing energy and you're giving the people that are on that really hard journey a massive lift instead of watching them trying to fucking scurry up a hill and rocks falling all 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 around them there's three types of people right there's people that don't give a don't give a bob either way. They're just floating through life. I call them rubber duckies, just Mm. bobbling down the stream. They don't need to hurt anyone. They don't need to help anyone. That's cool. That's cool. They're just comfortable in their own being, go to work, come home, sport, you know, school, kids, partner. There's the people that are ultra driven and successful and can't stop and want to give back and gratitude like ourselves. Right. Mm. And then, you know, and then there's the people that just want to pull everyone down and, woe is me and misery loves company and actually attack other people. Mm. Well, I mean, just take a look at yourself in the mirror for all, you know, for all of them. Who mm. do you actually want to be? If you, it's the old story. People say, okay, you're on your deathbed right now. What do you want to be recognized and remembered for mm. out of those three classifications or stereotypes? What's the I want to be someone of value or service, etc. I don't want to be normal. I believe we're all built for something special. Yep. But, and I certainly don't want to be the person that's bringing other people down. Yep. So I think you're right, mate. Like there's no better buzz. It's like a drug, like teaching someone something and watching them execute on it mm. and be proud of themselves and yep. grow. Oh, so yeah. people realize that they can, you know, that, that, you know, I've had it many a times where I've been, um, you know, working with someone and, and just you, you see that you give them just a small piece of information, but something clicks in them and then they realize, holy shit, I can actually do anything that I put my mind to. I can do, achieve and be anyone who I want to be. And I got, I got one of my guys in my team now that 
probably three, four, four years with us, maybe four mm. years. And um, he was on the cusp of the chopping block, maybe, mm. you know, a year ago. And one of our other team members was like, no, you don't understand. He's so close. He's so close. He's now my number one finance broker in Australia. Mm. He's smashing it. Yeah. And it's almost like the Bruce Lee thing, you know, don't fear the man with the kicks and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's almost like you do it over and over and over. And all of a sudden, it's subconscious competence, breathing, walking, mm. driving, changing. It just occurs. It's just fluid. And some people take longer than others. But if, and I realized, and I'm like, oh, we'll give him a crack. And, and now then I started investing in him mm. and that growth, he's just all over it now. And that's for not now. There's most people are scared of that because they want their staff to be good, but not great in yeah. case they leave. Mm. Now I want them all to want to leave me. Yeah, I want them all to go and want to go out into the world. Now I also want hopefully that they're amazingly phenomenal, successful, but in the same token, if they fail and they come back and eat humble pie, that's okay too. I don't mm. mind as yeah. long as they're a good human being. Yeah, absolutely. Joshy, Joshy, what's that um, Bruce Lee? Can you, while we're talking, can you just have a look what that Bruce Lee saying is and just uh, let us know? I fear uh, not the man who has practiced 10,000 kicks once, but I fear the man who has practiced one kick 10,000 times. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. But uh, mate, all right. Well, uh, we'll probably wrap it up there. But what's mm -hmm. uh, what's one takeout thing for uh, for people listening um, to to get them, you know, to get them through obviously a hard time at the moment? What would what would be one thing to um, to give everyone to uh, to get them through this? Yeah, look, I would say, mate, honestly, and it's only just around the corner. UPW, Tony Robbins, unleash the power within. The virtual. I just looked at it today, and I saw it's three hundred ninety-five dollars for. Uh, yeah, cheap. For four days. I mean, that's a lot of money to some people, but to yep. others, it's cheap as chips. Um, that is the most significant investment I think somebody can make in themselves for twenty twenty. Besides yep. their health and fitness. Yeah. Um, it changed my life. Uh, yeah. I've watched it change multiple people in the Infinity family's lives. Yeah. And I think investing in yourself is you know, not a school education. The memorization of answers is not education. Okay. Yeah. You know, like you care stark, you spend a lot of time with that. That's not education, but mm -hmm. growing and learning about yourself and how to control your feelings and emotions and, and who you are and who you want to be. Mm -hmm. But I, I would strongly suggest to people, to, to have four days off work or if you're working remotely and you can get away with it for a couple of hundred bucks, yep. UPW, Unleash the Power Within Tony Robbins next month. Um, it will be, and I think it's two, four days, but two of it's a weekend. That's a virtual Those, one, yeah. Yeah, virtual from home, plug the laptop into the TV, yep. crank the speakers up and just throw your hands in the air like you just don't care. I mean, I've had someone, I've got tickets for before I invested in them and they were really apologetic and left and said, I'm not into this and I'm not into that. And when they text me, I was standing there with my arms crossed like, mm. oh, what's it, you know, like, I, I know all this sort of shit. But you just got to give it, you just got to, you know, because like, I went to one, um, I think 10 years ago and at the start of it, Tony says, just let your inner child, just let you, just go back to when you were a kid and just let that kid out for the weekend and just, just get into it. Just don't have any, you know, don't have any thoughts about it. Oh, don't have shit, any preconceptions, just... no thoughts. No, you just need to just open yourself to, could I just take one nugget of gold today? Mm. Just one. Yep. That's it. Yep. And as soon as you open to that, you'll end up taking six or seven or 80. Uh, absolutely. Man. Because what you essentially what you're doing is you're, you're letting go of all the bullshit that you've had in your life. You're letting go of all these things and all these stigmas that are attached to this person who you are, which most people have got an issue with, you know, a lot of those things. That's right. Let go, you can when, release it. And we're not, we're not taught to communicate effectively. It's not like you don't do comms at school. You mm -hmm. know, how do you talk to your partner? How do you talk to your friend? Like it's, they're all lessons. They're not mistakes, but yeah, it's life. there are success leaves clues. You mm -hmm. know, I love, I get a lot of people reach out to me for, for catch ups and that. And, and likewise, I do the same with other mentors and success leaves clues. And if you aspire to be like somebody or, or you have a vision of being like someone, you need to get, within their, their sphere. You know, mm. you need to intern for them. You need to offer to do an unpaid trial. Like you need to get around the people you aspire to be like. Mm. Your network is your net worth. And yep. that's emotionally, physically, financially. It's not just financially and career. Mm. Your sphere, your environment is who you will become. 
Yeah, in absolutely. every aspect, and creating that, right? You know, writing that journey, that, that you know, journaling that, like we were saying before, with um, who do you want to be, absolutely. and really understanding that, write that down, and then, you know, like Tony Robbins said, he didn't become, he wasn't born this Tony Robbins multi-billionaire guy that helping people all over the world. He had to create him. He created you, him. You have to create that person you want to be, and not be afraid to change. Absolutely, and and anybody can create any life that they desire anybody right mm. we've all heard rags to riches stories and vice versa anyone mm. you just have to be very clear on what it is you want yeah. and you have to go at it and never ever ever give up yeah that's a that's a very good parting word i'm going to leave it right there because that's inspirational thank you very much for your time thank you for your next time